Okay, we are live. I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for the second time around uh, on uh, April the 5th, 2023. I deleted it, but I was on for about 30 seconds, about 45 minutes ago. Um, affairs of State, take precedent over the Affairs of State, and uh, yeah, got pulled in. We're going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 5 through 9. We're going to read it, do a brief application, and then we're going to pray because basically what we're here for each and every day is praying for our young people. Some of them are on spring break right now, we know, but we're going to pray for our young people and uh, all the battles <coughs> they face uh, each day going on to campuses and our workers who go into hard places, difficult places, pray for them each day and for ourselves just to make sure that we're alert and ready in the world that we're in. First Thessalonians chapter four, verses five through nine. This is Paul's message to the Thessalonican church. He says, picking up at verse five, you are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> That's a really great passage. And there are many things there. Now, when they're talking, get drunk, get drunk at night, I'm not going to turn this into an alcohol message, right? I think we got enough of those when we were kids. And uh, that's majoring in the minor. And there's there's much more to major in. Uh, not that we should be drunk, but we understand what they're saying here. It's like, don't be like everybody else, right? Uh, you you uh, don't belong uh, to the darkness. You belong to the light. You belong to the Lord. So let's not be like others. And if there's anything that's kind of a a real statement about the culture then and the culture now, it's Paul calling for the Thessalonican church to be alert, right? Uh, and self-controlled. And if there's anything for the church today, be alert, you know, be self-controlled. And, and the passage pretty much explains itself. In context, Paul is encouraging the Thessalonican church uh, about the coming of the Lord. This church faced persecution and were fearful. They had missed the day of the Lord. It's a great note to realize these folks in the first century uh, were worked up 2,000 years ago about the end of the world as well. Kind of gives us some insight, right? Uh, you think of everything that was taking place, and then, in, in fact, Rome, which had been anything, if Rome was anything, Rome was stable, except around this period of time, they were on a run of Caligula, Claudius, and Nero. So things were getting weird in the city with seven hills, and so people were apprehensive. And Paul's saying... Until then, no matter when, all the time, Paul is encouraging the believers in, in, in uh, Thessalonians to live honorably before the Lord, to keep their eyes open. And, uh, and that really is something you could say about our church presently in these days, is that we need to have our eyes open uh, to what's really going on and not necessarily only to what society wants us to see. The church these days has a very uh, knee-jerk reaction to the news cycle. Uh, we, 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 we hammer the premillennial people who are believing in the, the, the pre-tribulation rapture, right? Uh, we hammer them about newspaper exegesis, right? Every time something happens and it's in the newspaper or in the news, it's a sign that Jesus is coming tomorrow. And uh, on the flip side, quite often a lot of our, our, our compassionate brothers uh, look at everything uh, in terms of, oh, wow, the media is doing this. Uh, students are marching for that. Uh, the culture is pointing this way. And, and we knee-jerk react because there is this deep-seated love in the current church these days to, to be loved and to be accepted and not to understand that if they hated Jesus, they're going to hate us. So Paul's saying, keep alert, whether you're in uh, <coughs> Thessalonica in the first century or whether you're in Southern California in the 21st century, keep alert, right? Um, and the fact that we, we, we are not alert kind of demonstrates that we really haven't separated ourselves from society and the culture. We need to be alert and understand there's a spiritual battle taking place uh, that far outweighs anything you're seeing in the news between Republicans and Democrats 
liberals and uh, conservatives, right? Um, and he's also saying, don't put your faith in anything other than Jesus Christ. Uh, just keep your faith in the Lord, right? For those with a believing loyalty in Christ, you have to know we are not appointed, appointed to suffer the Lord's wrath, right? There will be suffering in this world. Um, we'll go through hard times, and I think we're, we're headed towards hard times. I don't think it's necessarily end times, but we're headed towards hard times. Um, and, uh, but the righteous suffering with the wicked? No. Just stay alert. Stay faithful to the Lord, and the Lord will see us through. You know, some people thought when I'm reading Thessalonians, ah, Pastor Joe's talking about a rapture, right? That's how we're going to be okay, right? We're going to survive. We're not going to suffer with the wicked. And no, I'm not talking about a rapture. I'm talking about victory. Victory over all the badness we see today. If we have our eyes open, if we're sensitive to what the Spirit is saying, if we're in the Word, if we're, we're seeking the Lord and not necessarily our own vanity or to please the world. And it's our own vanity that causes us to forego remembering to pray for our young people because we think they're just going to be okay. Uh, no, they're not just going to be okay. We have a stewardship responsibility and one between imparting wisdom and discipline and all those things we do with our young people. We also need to pray for them and arm them when they go to the the Normandy beach of uh, spiritual warfare, which is our education system. And you don't like that. I've got teachers I love, people that are really good teachers, but those teachers are also, many of them are believers who are caught in a rock in a hard place. And our students are landing in these places where their their faith is being diminished. The, 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 the secular culture is being lifted and they're being mocked, ridiculed, isolated, and, uh, and forced to get into groupthink. And we need to pray for our students. One, that they stand. Two, that not only they survive, but that they thrive because they can be salt and light in those places of the world. So we need to pray for them, pre-K through graduate school, and we need to pray for those workers, the cops, the, the workers in government. Uh, can you imagine going into that place every day? Pray for those believers that, that they can be an influence there for the Lord, as well as our teachers and such. And so, so that's the application. Be alert, be self-controlled, be aware of what's going on and don't depend on anybody but Christ. Have your eyes open to what's taking place around us. Cool. Um, I know I got a couple of viewers there. Wow. Awesome sauce. Uh, hey, uh, continue to pray for revival. We want to pray for revival in those places, revival in our world. Uh, we did mention, we'll mention it again today. There was a lady named Stella. The request came online, Stella and her family. Stella's sister had to be taken off life support the other day, and she passed away. Uh, be in prayer for Stella and her family. Uh, also, Megan Meeks, one of my former students, liver and kidney issues, she has cysts. Ryan and Annette Storms are, um, in fact, I'm officiating their grandmother's funeral today at uh, Rose Hills. So be in prayer for Ryan and Annette Storms. My friend Jimmy Maldonado didn't ask for this, but, but he's not feeling well. Uh, be in prayer for Jimmy Maldonado. He was the point guard on my basketball team uh, in high school. And be with Roxy Clark. Pray for Roxy Clark. She took a fall, had to go see a doctor, and uh, be in prayer for Roxy Clark, as well as those battling cancer and those um, those uh, battling uh, the treatment of cancer. Tammy McVashel, Bill Trollinger, Becky Valadez, who's in radiation now, uh, Rachel Gilbert, uh, Colby Van Dyke, Emmanuel. Uh, also pray for those. Uh, that are in the Northwest, Darlene Carroll, her medical issues, her friend Kathy Duncan, intestinal issues, their friend Ralph with COPD. Continue to pray for Vision Paradise, pray for a future Army ministry and our ministries at Burbank Faith, as well as Burbank Faith Virtual. We hit a little snag with Vir Burbank Faith Virtual. We will get that up this week. I'm pretty positive we are, just trying to fine tune it. Uh, also, um, be in prayer for our finances. As we meet our obligations, we're very good about meeting our obligations, but our 100-year-old building is not cooperating. And uh, so if you can be in prayer that uh, we can get um, just the finances in order to fix our back steps, uh, it's killing us. So uh, be in prayer for that. And uh, we're having some meetings uh, this Friday about that. So pray that it goes well. And uh, continue to pray. Angelus Crest is they Christian camp as they dig out of all the stuff that hit them from um, uh, uh, all the stuff that hit them with the snow. And uh, I got Pastor Mariah right now contacting me about 
our, our website. Cool. So we're on it. But be in prayer for um, uh, Brian Shaw, his family, Dave Krause, the directors of uh, Angela's Crest as uh, they get back on track. And of course, Granite Ridge, that's our home camp. Be in prayer for Granite Ridge. And if you notice, we put up the Sign Up Genius. It's the link to signing up for our 90 hours of prayer to cover us for kids camp in July. Please take a slot. If you live on the East Coast, and I know some of you live in the East Coast, uh, all the way to Texas and Illinois and different places, please take a slot that would be you know fitting uh, your time zone. So if you prayed at you know 7 a.m., that's 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. our time, those times would be perfect if you could fill those for us. If not, staff is filling those because we will pray all 90 hours that we are at camp. We want those camps covered in prayer. Okay, um, I think we're good. So let's pray and then we'll get you out of here. Rick Savage, thank you so much, Rick, for clicking on, praying for you and your family. Let's pray and then we'll get you guys out of here. Lord, we do pray. For our young people, Lord, from pre-K to graduate school and all the places in between, Lord, we pray for their safety, their, their blessing on them physically, spiritually, but Lord, we pray for your strength to be upon them, Lord, that they would be salt and light in dark places, Lord. We pray for our teachers who go into difficult places, the police officers who go into difficult places, our, our soldiers that go into difficult places, and even those, Lord, that it's easy to say all of politics are, are corrupt. I'm guilty of that as well, Lord, but we know there are good people in all those offices and halls, Lord. We pray for them, Lord, that your spirit would shine and that uh, your spirit would, um, would really bring salt and light to those places as well. So we pray for those people, Lord. We pray for those that are um, ill today. Uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, you could uh, keep your hand upon them, Lord. We think of Megan Meeks. Uh, we think of Jimmy Maldonado, Roxy Clark, Lord. We pray for Ryan and Annette as uh, they, they lay their grandma to rest today, Lord. We pray for Tammy, for Bill, for Becky, for Rachel, for Colby, and all those dealing with cancer, Lord. We pray for Darlene Carroll and, and Kathy Duncan and Ralph. We pray for Vision Paradise, our Spanish ministry and our future Armenian ministry. All of our things, Lord, including uh, all of our ministries, including our finances at Burbank Faith. Lord, uh, we just ask that your blessings would be upon us, Lord. Be with Angela's Crest as they recover from all the storms. And be with Granite Ridge, God, as we dive into this camp season, covering each and every moment that we're at camp with prayer. Lord, uh, we thank you for this opportunity to be used by you. Find us faithful in everything that we do. Bless us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Awesome sauce. Um, and... Uh, and uh, Thank you, Rick Savage. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. You encourage me. Rick Savage is reading my book. Thank you, Rich. Rick. Um, and uh, and uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and then Mariah is texting me about um, my video here. So uh, our, our website. So be in prayer. And uh, we're at the 13 minute mark. I did get you out early. Be in prayer for me because I am officiating the the, the going home service for uh, Eloisa Storms today. You just want to make sure you don't say anything foolish. I got experience, but just be in prayer for me as uh, I run that service today. Rick, thank you for your encouragement. And uh, everyone else who's out there, I don't know who the viewers are, please leave a comment. Lee, uh, like, 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 uh, share, share, share. That's not necessarily for vanity sake, but it is for the sake of staying in the algorithm of Facebook so people continue to see us. Okay, folks, uh, the Sign Up Genius link is in the comment section. Be sure to check up on that and uh, and sign up for a prayer shift at Granite Ridge uh, for Granite Ridge in July. God bless. Take care. We will talk to you soon.